At the end of our second day in Montana, we were feeling pretty discouraged. In past years, the pronghorn populations seem to be much higher, and generally, it seems like the best approach to spot and stalk pronghorn hunting is finding as many pronghorn as you can in stockable positions and get as many stalks in as possible. But that strategy was proving to be difficult because we couldn't find any in the first place. After driving through many miles of public land on day two, it was apparent that pronghorn populations were just extremely low. Because we weren't seeing many, we knew that this wasn't going to be like the other pronghorn hunts that we'd been on, so we decided that when we made stalks, we were going to play them patiently and only get aggressive when we were confident that we had a good chance of getting a shot. We decided to go back to an area we had seen pronghorn the day before, and around 1 p.m., we finally spotted a group on public land and decided to make a stalk. Do you want to go after them? You can go after them. Let's just go back to the truck and get our stuff. Gotta numb it up. <laughs> numb it up before the big stomp. <laughs> He's just slobbering. I'm pounding outdoors. All right, they're still there. Let's make a move. Good luck. Wind, doesn't the wind seem like it's slightly quartering this way? I can see him right there. They're all right there and he's bedded. Do you see him? If you guys just want to stay here, we might just start working that way. We may have to come back and take a different route, but to start, I think we're going to drop. Just try to find a way to find a little seam to crawl up in there. Struggling to find an angle. <laughs> Not very many times have I played a brock or not this slow. They're now in this ditch just above where they were originally bedded. Got eyes on them again, and we've just since been trying to get close enough. But now we're up here, the wind's straight up from them to us. So we're gonna just try to circle down and just come right over the top of them. It's gonna be pretty hectic there at the end, but if we can slide in there, we got enough wind. I think we might be able to pull it off, but we're gonna have to move before they beat us up here. sat down right there and they'd have been in range. Dang it. He was looking the other way when I drew, but then when I, when I drew, they all took off and he just was like, what? It's pretty fun. <laughs> kind of dealing with uh, Mars out here a little bit. Good, Good job, man. That. that was fun. That was sweet. The reason I felt confident popping up is because I knew that hill was behind us and it had shadow on it. Because of that, we were popping up and our hats and stuff are blended in. We're, on the other hand, if we would have came in above them, look over here. From there, there's not nearly the same amount of hill. It doesn't just like blend in up there. So had we been popping over the top, it would have been super obvious that we were doing that. You know, ideally you'd have like sage or something right at the top of the hill that you could crawl behind and blend in with. But in this situation, it's so bare. You know, they've been looking at that all day and all of a sudden they look up and your head's sticking up these pronghorn will lock. The deer will too, but pronghorn are more likely to. So in any stalk situation, I try to make sure that there's some sort of background. We thought you were gonna get him. How close you get? 60. Really? To the buck? Yeah, I mean, all those pronghorn were right there. I looked down and a doe just happened to step just into like, to where she could see up our ditch. Next time, next time, you keep, you get, you get a few more of those and you're gonna get one killed. Let's do it. Let's do it. After Keith and I got back to the truck, we talked to the guys, took a little lunch break, and we quickly glassed up another aggressive buck with a group of does. We noticed that this buck was significantly more fired up than all the other bucks that we had seen up to this point. He was chasing does, chasing off other bucks, and just seemed like a rutted up old pronghorn. 
while we watched him, Michael drove around the piece of public land and saw other pronghorn bucks as well, which brought up the confidence and morale for the rest of the hunt. There's like a big group, I think they're on private, lone buck, close to public, and then there are some, there's another group that is on public. Kind of sweet. I don't know. What do you think about these? He's just trying to cut a little, little bit. Bucks. Boys, there's some pronghorn over here. There's some great bucks. This is awesome. So, in order to approach the aggressive buck while keeping the wind in our favor and staying out of sight, it seemed like it made the most sense to have Keith drop us off on a different public access point. And on our way there, we were surprised by a bonus buck that was standing right off the road and completely surrounded by public land. So Keith just dropped us off. We're driving down here to make a loop on these bucks that we've been watching for the last like two hours. And there's a buck on public right off the road. He let us drive past him twice. We hopped out. We're gonna make a move. Get the decoy with. We may use it, we may not, but we'll see. Head's in good shape too, so I just sharpen that up and keep hunting with it. So on the last stock that Keith and I were on earlier, we were trying to keep a hill behind us as we popped on the top. The same thing happened here. That's in the shadow, it's real dark up there, and he's looking back up at the sun. So that's why we got away with the two shots. Just try to keep that in mind, you know, always have that back cover. You know, it doesn't always look the same you know, each hunt, but sometimes it's a tree that you're right up against. But in this situation, it was a hill that was like 10 yards behind us. On to the next. I think if we get down to the next level. 
Bullshit. At this point, daylight was fading fast, and we knew that the buck was hit hard enough that the shot would be fatal at some point. We just weren't sure when. He had already made it a long way, and Nick and I decided that the most ethical thing that we could do was to try to get a follow-up shot as soon as possible. As soon as I had terrain to work with, I started to cut distance as fast as I could. I eventually got out of sight of Nick, and in the last few minutes of light, I was able to get another shot off at the buck, and I assumed that I had missed. I never found my arrow, and I ended up going back and meeting Nick at the decoy. Like, I know it's like somewhere low. Ted thinks it's center mass and low. Yeah, that's what I think too. But I don't know how hard he's hit exactly. So it might be one of these deals where we have to follow it up in the morning or we can find him in the morning. It's not good, I'm, I'm not pleased with it. I yeah. will say that. Pretty bummed, we're just gonna have to get up early and 
be at it as soon as we can. I'll be honest, man. Come out here and you get an opportunity like that, you know you've got a steady pin. It's hard not to shoot. He just turned and I think it just hit him, but just not quite forward mm -hmm. enough and not up enough. I think we'll find him probably sometime tomorrow. He's definitely hurt and I feel I feel bad. I'll just do our best to try to find him tomorrow. We'll go back and tell these guys what happened. A lot of things transpired since last time we've seen the boys. <laughs> Alright guys, it's first light down here looking for this buck. I'm just glassing right now because where he was and kind of where he was going we can see from this side of the road. It's public on both sides so Keith is with me. The rest of the guys are up on top getting ready to come help as well. Shot at him that second time last night at last light. After I shot, I pushed at him pretty hard because he kept just walking away with his head down. Then when he saw me, he got a burst of energy. I don't think he ever knew that I was on to him until the very end. But I watched him run about 400 yards and then cut back down onto more of the public. It's been 10 hours since shot and we all think it's just low dead center but low. It's actually really cool out. You know, if he is dead, there's a chance that we can still salvage him. That's what I'm hoping. Because honestly, that's one of the main reasons I like doing this. I love eating pronghorn, and if, if he goes to waste, I'm going to be really upset. So, And in general, I am upset. We're going to do our best to stay after him and hopefully get him, get him down if he needs another arrow or find him if he is down somewhere. I don't know. We'll try to make the most of it here. After glassing from multiple angles for a few hours and not seeing any sign of the buck, we decided that the next best step was to walk to different high points on the public land, continuing to glass from different angles to try to find the buck. As we worked across the ridge, we eventually got to a high knob and immediately Keith glassed up a bedded buck that looked a lot like the buck that I had hit the night before. While we were trying to confirm if it was him or not, he all of a sudden stood up and took off running. Just as he went out of sight, another buck that had been cruising all morning showed up running as well and we realized that he was trying to run off the other buck. As soon as they were out of sight, Ted and I took off to try to keep eyes on him and try to confirm if it was in fact the buck that I had hit the night before. So as you saw, he went over that hill, and we can really see about anywhere that he would escape from. So I'm just going by myself, just because we feel like we just got to get this thing down, and I feel like alone I'll be able to, you know, be a little bit quieter and just really take my time easing up through there. So go get him. He 
he might get a shot. <laughs> Looking like it. He's been hard after him down there. Yeah, Keith's moving to get a better angle. He's making serious moves now. Now he's up to one foot. Yeah. So you can come with me for that. You cool with that, Nick? I'm cool with all of it. I mean, we'll get him. Zach and I are working our way in on this buck. I got down here a little ways, and I stopped right here, and he's going ahead, and he's gonna loop around and see if he can get eyes on this thing. He went up once already where we last saw him go over and couldn't see him from there. He said once he got up there it was super steep and couldn't see down in there real well. So now we're basically looping about as far around as you can get on the complete opposite side of the hill. And he's just working his way in real slow trying to get good eyes back into the hill where the buck went over at. So I'm just hanging back now, waiting for a signal from Zach. <laughs> Hopefully he can sneak around through the sagebrush and get up get eyes back on that buck. Pick up, you can see him straight in the bottom of the creek. You can see his white. Oh, yeah, I see him. He ain't very far right now. I think the options for an approach are to try to come in on this bank right where it faces out. You could potentially just like be 30, 40 yards from him, like kind of above, or just take the water all the way to him. Maybe look up that green, big green bush right there. I think I can get to that green bush and then do you see where he is? Just to the left, there's like a couple of sage right before it like straight cliffs out that I think I might be able to slide all the way to that. Yeah, I think stay on that creek. I think you'll be able to get everywhere you need to. I think if you just wait for these wind gusts, you Zach's making a move up top a little higher. Right there, on the top left of the screen.
backs up there right now. He's got his release clipped onto a string, I can tell. I think he's just waiting for the pronghorn to look to the right a little bit. Looks like he's looking just slightly quartered to the left, so Zach's probably just waiting for him to look away so he can get drawn. Sitting up there like that for the last 25 or 30 minutes, probably. <laughs> Did you see it all? <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there. We were, we were sitting oh, there for so long. Was he just facing with his butt just, just right towards me? Straight him? butt. Yeah. I mean, I then exactly 30 yards. And I was just like, I mean, I shot him real hard quartering away, but yeah. it's all I needed to do. I just needed something. <sighs> Dude, yeah. I mean,. I feel terrible that he lived as long as he did, but I'm happy, so happy that we got him. Like, I went to bed last night and I felt like complete crap because like first hunt of the year, you know, it's like, I hate this feeling. Oh, just to have finished the job. The things that I kept saying in my head, you still gotta make the shot, settle the pin. Still gotta make the shot, settle the pin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. God. Got him, bud. <laughs> <What's your release? laughs> I forgot my release this morning. And Nick's like, I got one in my pack. Booyah. I was looking through the spotter and I was watching Ted. I could see, I could like see the whites of your eyes. I said, I think he's smiling. And then I saw your hand go like, hell yeah. <laughs> I, just kept, I, just kept, down there. I just kept looking at it with the camera because he was just sitting in the same spot the whole time. The pronghorn and Zach. Oh, yeah. And so I just held it like this, and then I just let it down a little bit, and I'd hold it back up because I couldn't tell when he was going to draw. <laughs> some meat on ice? We got meat, meat on ice. Thanks for sticking it out. Oh, that yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, that was wild. Of course. I'm, I'm just happy that we stayed after it like we did, and honestly, your guys' help made it a lot easier. These guys for those watching at home just kept being like, nah man, like we're gonna help you find this thing. Like they could have easily, Michael could have went and made a stock of his own today, but stuck it out out here. Well, you didn't make a little side stock. A little but. side stock. <laughs> she kind of went rogue on her yeah, yeah, he, he had a little side quest. Oh man, we're a team. Yeah man, that was awesome. <laughs> Where's he at? He's just down there right now. Well, let's go down what there. What side of the creek is he on? He's on our side. <laughs> what a deal. Yeah. Hey, get his straps out right now. <laughs> yeah. Get the fire hot. Let's put him on. Let's go. I want to show you guys like the stock a little bit. Should we just get down in here? Yeah. Like Ted was just right on this bank and he could see him. And like when you're down here, you can't see where he was. I knew he was over that little fold there. So I was able to move all this pretty dang quick. Yeah. And then I think right here is where I was like, all right, if I keep staying hunched over, like I'm gonna start pushing my limits. So I got to here, and I just barely peeked up through the gr grass, and when I'm pronghorn hunting especially, I always like to glass through grass and look for horns, cause like, if they get a clear view of you, they're gonna get you probably. I got down on my knees, threw the bow down. I like being in grass like this with a bow, cause you can just push it over. Every time the wind blows, you can just kind of slide up over top of it, and then just push your bow forward again. You can see my trail. And then this is where things got really weird. I got to here and through this little gap, I could see his head through there. And I kept, I could never range it, but I was like, he's gotta be 40 yards. The whole time, ever since 
we had first spotted him, we talked about that spot right there, right mm -hmm. where that little patch of sage is. Yep. But luckily that hill kind of cuts back in this way. Mm -hmm. So I, I slid on my back then through here. Doing one of these, keeping my eyes to where I could see him. I was just sliding on my back, crawled up and over this. <laughs> then came back down here <laughs> just to cut, you know, seven uh, yards. I ended up getting to where I did that and I could see him right there. See this little tuft of sage right here close? So I would just put that between his eyes and my eyes. And finally, when he did start to step, I just leaned back like this, drew my bow so he wouldn't see me using this hill. Mm -hmm. And then I just leaned right back out. There. The arrow went through him and he just, he just jumped up and took off running, kept looking this way. And he's down over there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yes. Let's go get eyes on him. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Extremely quartered away. Went right through him. Son. <laughs> that will work. Boys, that will work. Kind of a good one. <laughs> I want to look at where this exit of the first shot is. Second shot, shot was like extremely quartered away put it there and it came right out like on the other side like right here the entry and exit on the first shot just really low like this is the entry and this is the exit here he started to turn at the shot and I think that's why it's such a strange like angle because it actually entered lower than where it exited a lot of people come out I've hunted these for three years never killed one <laughs> I, you let me go on all these stalks, and you're just like, nah, man, I'll just watch it. And I'm Dude, like, it's, it's right. fun watching, man. It's, oh, wow. I love watching it. I'm glad that you think so because, you know, I love chasing them. <laughs> 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 if I wasn't chasing them, I'd be wanting to be filming you chase them. We're talking about like, you know, some of the lessons that we learned here. It is challenging to get in bow range of a pronghorn, and typically your shots are going to be a little bit longer than what they are when you're whitetail hunting or elk hunting. Um, it's just super open, and they've got incredible eyesight, and they can smell you, and they can hear you. And I think typically, you know, when you hear people talk about pronghorn, you're going to hear things like, you know, just trying to, you know, get a shot off on them, and you can hit them anywhere. I knew better than to force a shot when he was high alert like that. The buck that I missed prior, had no idea we were in the world, but in the heat of the moment, I let like the pronghorn hunting get the best of me and I shot. The consequence was I wounded a buck and we had to get a follow-up shot on him. The other lesson learned, you know, stick with it. No matter what, we were gonna put all effort into this for the next probably several days, even if we had to find him by, you know, looking for birds that were on him or something or listening for coyote talent. And then just having a team around you is definitely helpful. I got a you know, thank Prente for letting me go. You know, you let me take the stalks, dude. That was sweet. These guys for just filming Ted for filming. Like everybody, just you know, being on being on the same team is a lot of fun. This is definitely not just my buck. And you know, had a blast in Montana. Let's cut him up. Get his meat on ice, huh? Let's cut him up. Get him on ice, boy. I know so many people are just. Oh, I can't find him. Or even like when you came down here, mm -hmm. you looked over, you saw him come down, and like. Oh, he's not down there. I didn't see him. Giving up right there. I'm thoroughly impressed. That's, That's awesome. sweet. It's Don't fun. forget about this one. It's freaking crazy. Yeah. We got him cut up. We're headed out. Feeling good. It's a good day.